Hey everybody, Corey Express 2 here. This is day two of Sequestra Fast. Before we begin on this video, please make sure to hit that sub button, turn on the notification bell, follow everything in the description down below, including your comments too. So without further ado, let's get started. So today I have to go to a 25,000 pyramid game show that is gonna happen downstairs. And then later on, about to do enjoy you know enjoy my day see what's going on um they have buck balling but i'm going to not record that because of you know people it's probably only a short little thing but hopefully it'll be a lot of fun and then later i'll probably come back throughout the day to see if something's happening later on maybe there will be a couple of panels i might go to with my friend and hopefully enjoy my rest of my day but let's get started so that way you guys will see the action on day two of Sequestria Fest. So I'll see you guys later. To be our the, the new teammate for uh, Mar uh, for uh, Phoenix. Welcome, new teammates. Welcome. We are no Mark. 
we already have Phoenix and Yutanka. So for our two new team members, do you want to be able to introduce yourself and what you do for the Phantom? Uh, my name is uh, Kyle, and I'm just the fan. Woohoo! There's no such thing as just a fan, I've got to say. And you. My name is Blue and Collect. I DJ for the fandom, and I just hang out with people. Hey, fan. Nothing wrong with that. Every part of this, of this fandom counts. Yay! And for this, this, this new round of pyramid, hope you all have. Pay attention to a new generation carefully because these categories are all themed to Generation 5. <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping you guys were, were paying attention carefully. And since we start over here for the first thing of your memory, I'm actually going to start over here. You all will have first time at our new world. We have Team Time with Alpha Bill, Storm to Heights, Good Be My Bay. Tip Tip Toray, Kissy Will Lift, and Izzy Wizzy, Let's Get Busy. Izzy Wizzy, Let's Get Busy. Okay, then, you're going Izzy Wizzy, Let's Get Busy. Which should be like. Everybody wants Izzy. I'm You would be giving. Describe in these ways that Izzy, quote unquote, unicycle. Unicycle. Oh. Because kind of what she calls the uh, what she oh, calls yeah, yeah. Okay. Here we go. Thirty seconds on the clock. Go. I'm saying, you guys, you have to pay attention to the new generation very carefully. Two categories down, four to go. And since you guys are, you get from some points, you guys will be going again. Take your turn. Giving and who will be receiving. Uh, I'll, I'll give them. And this one will be describing these things seen around the crystal tea room. Things seen around the crystal tea room. The blank tea room. Uh, yeah. Um, they have competitions. And he goes, yes. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, different word in the front. Uh, I can't see the first word. 
turn. Uh, 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 skip. Halfway through this round of pyramid, and we are tied. Who will come out on top? Halfway done, halfway to go, and we come back over here. Which category will you choose from now? All right, pitching a lift, which is actually reveal our 7-Eleven. <laughs> This one you'll be describing these things are related to Hicks Trailblazer. It's related to Hicks. Uh, 30 seconds on the clock. Go. He's not a city cop. He's a... Uh, he's a police officer. You guys look good. You guys are in the lead now. Yeah. And you will now have your choice of either of the final two categories. Pip uh, Pip Parade. Pip Parade? Or as I thought, Pip Pip Do We Do. I see what he did there. Alright, we'll be giving him who will be receiving for this one. For this one, you'll be describing things related to Pip. Okay. Things related to Pip. 30 seconds on the clock. And go. Okay, It all comes down to you. You need five points. Oh, no. You have five points to you have five points to catch ahead, but you need to have six points in order to take the win. And for this one, who can do it? Okay. And for this final category, we'll be describing these product placements seen around Zephyr Heights. Describe these product placements seen around Zephyr Heights. Not Verizon, not AT&T, not, um, it's pink. It's got the doot 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 across the top. No, not Samsung. Uh, it is a telephone company. It's pink. No, not AT&T, not, not Verizon, not Cricket. Skip. Um, the normal, normal, uh, slow snail mail. Oh my gosh, This is what I was saying, guys. You had to it was T-Mobile. Uh, it must be us. Okay. Now with that, Jacob, who would you like to use both of them? Oh, that's my phone. Woo! Oh, my God, you had T-Mobile. I just want to start looking at your phone. I don't know these things. I'm not the left of that big at the boom. Next slide, please. Do you want this, or can I just keep playing with it? Uh, you don't need this? You don't need this? Teams, this is our final pyramid round of the game. And this one you'll be de describing these equestrian holidays. And then I should have the last one. Well, but, 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 oh, but, 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 
and he'll be giving, he'll be receiving. Harder, so we're going to give you 60 seconds on the clock. Uh, oh, please pretend we're giving it away. Okay. 60 seconds on the clock. Go. Uh, there's a really big song about it that I don't like or ice skating at all. Okay. Uh, Applejack adopts Sweetie Belle. Guys, but hey, the thing is, you are still going to be our winners. And for every, for, for all of our teammates, that, for all, all of our teammates who played today, you will not be going home empty-handed because we got some lovely prizes for you that we will be giving you away once this panel is over. Thanks, if you would please. tell you, you know, I've had my share of watching Old Friendship is Witchcraft and Epic Wob Time. I mean, um, you know, I've got uh, I've got remixes of Dubstep Dishwasher on my, <laughs> in my car. I have it, and I love it, and I always will. You know, I, uh, yeah. One thing, or one thing that actually you really gets me is it's like, um, if anyone remembers the old uh, fan fiction Cupcake, 
Oh, um, really? Well, I, I was uh, like, good night, everybody. I was going to point out with that is it's like, Mad Fanfic came out before Party of One. And that's true. That's it's true. It's crazy to me how, like, how long the fandom has been creating content, like, practically since its inception. Very well, okay, I'll tell you an interesting here um, that, that is a parallel to that. Um, so, um, if you're not aware, myself and Nova Rose um, are on staff for TROCON and have been doing a lot of things to help get that convention um, up and running for this year and um, kind of get, you know, help save it essentially. And we've been doing some of the uh, online streaming for them. So. What happened um, not that long ago is somebody in one of the game nights we did on a stream referenced the jar. And somebody in the chat went, what is that? I don't get it. And w all of us basically, I mean, at least virtually, were kind of like, like virtually looked at one another like, I don't want to be the one to explain this. <laughs> like, but... There's those things that kind of become ingrained in culture, and then it's like the, where where does that lie then at that point? It's like a, um, you know, at what point does that just like, do you, it kind of is that thing of, uh, do we do we advise the next generation and continue this down the line, so to speak? And it makes you think a little bit about it about, you know, how we kind of continue this on into the next generation here, because it's like, at some, to a certain extent, you can say that you would want people to respect the older generation, and you know, respect the fan works that got us to here. But is it right for us to kind of force it down the new generation's throat? Is it right for us to say, like, you can't be a true brony unless you uh, know about this or that? You know. I feel like you just need to stop at, you're not a true bony if dot dot dot, and then if you start your sentence off like that, you, uh, you, you've made a mistake. Well, and, and I kind of feel like it kind of goes against the elements of harmony. Mm -hmm. You know, it kind of goes against what that belief, uh, you know, behind the creation of the community was, was about acceptance and about welcoming. And I think that there could be a matter of, like, educating about the past, but there's that fine line between educating about educating somebody about the past and like creating an unrealistic expectation of them. So that's something to think about now, you know, like for us, I mean, how nostalgic is it for us to look back at this point at some of that early fandom stuff? You know, it's like, you know, remembering the original Eurobeat Discord from back in the day. You know, before there was a 2015 and a 2019, you know, or, or looking back on, um, gosh, what was the one where there was, uh, it was Final and Octi on the beach? Yeah. Mm. yeah, there's so many, there's so much stuff when you look back and it's like, for us it gives us nostalgia, but it might not for somebody who's coming up with G5 now. Uh, the other thing, too, about this is, like, and I, I hate to do this to you, Rose. How old were you when you joined the fandom? Uh, 19. Yeah. A lot of us, I think, now this isn't, you know. Oh, wait, no, 18. Eight. Okay. So, a lot of us, from what I've seen, you know, like, and it's not a general rule of thumb, you know, like, that there's exceptions. But I think a lot of us were teens, you know, we're teenagers, maybe early 20s, and now we're like in mid-20s mid, mid 20s into our 30s and such. And you actually, like, if you look at that parallel of that against how you would act outside of that, you know, if you take yourself out of the brony community, right, and put yourself out into the real world and think about that interaction piece between somebody who's 30 and somebody who's 13. I, I guess um, we've kind of seen this a little bit with um, SpongeBob, where okay, um, where it's like I feel like '90s kids specifically, like ones that were born in like between like '91, '93, um, like you get a bunch of us in a car together and we will just not stop quote SpongeBob. Like it's, she does it. It's true. 
I, I, like, I can't even tell. The amount of time she's looked, uh, I, I'm looking for something around the house, and she goes, did you check under the train? It is ridiculous. It is. And it's like, I'm very curious, because it seems like people, especially that have been around in the fandom uh, since 2011-ish, uh, like, we, we kind of have our own references similar to that with, like, old pony stuff. Um, so I'm very curious to go kind of see, like, what, what the, the new generation brings us. <laughs> yeah. And, and will we be able to understand these references? Well, because the other thing that I was thinking about with this is when Gen 4 started and we, you know, as a community really blew up, right? What was the attitude like towards Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 3? You know, uh, uh, we don't talk about 3.5. <laughs> Never mind, no. I know that's going against my point, but, um, but there was kind of like, and, and, and everybody, you know, had their own way of it, but, it, and part of this is me getting a vibe, but I always felt like there was kind of this sense of, like, disdain towards the older generations for a bit, for a lot of people, because it very much became like a, that was the old show that was really for little girls. This one transcends it, so I want to separate myself from that into this. You know, so it so it almost created that more of that generational gap. And I feel like that kind of fell down a little bit over time. Because I'm not going to lie to you, if you haven't if you haven't gone back and rewatched G1, some of G1 is metal as hell, guys. Like. <laughs> No one can stop that smooth. The, uh, G1 Smooth, Nothing Can Stop the Smooth. The, and first of all, that song, the Nothing Can Stop the Smooth, is a banger. It is a banger. So does Seapon is. Um, oh, shoot me do, shoot, shoot me do. <laughs> um, but G1 Turek, G1 Turek is damn. And Grogar, actual Grogar. <laughs> they got real Grogar back then. Um, but <laughs> now we have Diet Grogar. Diet <laughs> Grogar. <laughs> Uh, all of the substance, no sugar. What? <laughs> you also got a diet smooth too. Although G four smooth was pretty great, I'm not gonna lie. I did love G four smooth in his own way. Hat. But I think that, but just even just this conversation we're having about this stuff goes okay. Are we gonna have these same conversations in G five now? Right? Yeah. Like, we don't know where they're going to take it. We don't know what villains we're going to have, if we're going to have characters come back, you know, because, like, time is weird and relative, and um, I it might have been Fiora, I'm not sure. Somebody has done figuring out the timeline of, of, of Friendship is Magic, and it is all kinds of messed up. Um, <laughs> but, um, like you have beings that are alive for thousands of years, and it's not quite been established yet exactly the distance of time between G4 and G5. So it'll be interesting to see what they do. But I bring all this up because it's that thinking about looking back. We're kind of, to be blunt, guys, our nostalgia goggles are going on, aren't they? We're at that point. You know, the show's been off the air for almost three years. The show um, has been was first started in 2010. I think a lot of us already go back and watch season one episodes with nostalgia goggles on. Like y yesterday, I did the Odd Pony Out panel, and that has clips from season one. And I'm like watching it. I'm like thinking to myself, like God, classic season one Applejack when Ashley Ball did her voice like this, and I'm like I'm literally thinking this while I'm watching it. And there's nothing wrong with nostalgia, but I have often said, and I truly believe this, that life has a constant battle between nostalgia and progress. And the idea is, though, you can have both. It's like you don't want to overshadow one or the other. You can respect what came before and enjoy it but still want to move us forward into the future with what we learned. And I think that that's the biggest thing, like, if we're going to take away anything from Friendship is Magic, is that we can take what we learned and what we built as a community and move it on into the next generation and grow it. Isn't that essentially what, uh, what they did with She-Ra? 
I mean, arguably, yes. Because uh, I, I feel like they they took some of the things of old Shira that wasn't wasn't so great. Um, watching old Shira is interesting. <laughs> it is interesting because I watched eighties old eighties He Man and Shira for a paper in college about um, gender and cartoons, um, which is very interesting to watch them back to back and realize just how gendered both were. Like, the, the juxtaposition between the things that He-Man says and does and the things that She-Ra says and does, they're both heroes, but it's almost like we have to remind you that she's on a different plateau than him. So, uh, which is great to see nowadays, things breaking that trope. So happy to see that. Because, I, I mean, I'm already kind of seeing it with... Um with New Pony, because I know, and I, I love Pony, but it, it got better with time. But I know see, season one characters were very archetypal, as it were. Um, they got better, except for Rainbow Dash. <laughs> um, I do a whole panel she on was it. She perfect you can see as it. she was. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like she got worse, but I digress. Um, you can go to the YouTube. We did a whole panel on it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and but, it wasn't on your point, but I digress. Um, but yeah, like, uh, and I think that's why I love Starlight so much, was she was introduced kind of like as a map, I mean, cast member that wasn't built on any kind of um, archetype. She just felt like a fully fleshed out character. And, um, so, yeah, I've never named for life. Woo! Um, <laughs> but, um, like, that's why I like this new generation, because it's like, I feel like they have sort of archetypes, but they, they feel a little bit more fleshed out than season one comics. There's, it's interesting, because looking at um, the fandom reaction since the movie came out, since the G5 movie came out, there was definitely, I think, a push to be like, is this character, like, is this, is Sunny the new Twilight? Is, um, is he the, is he is the new Pinky, et cetera? But at the same token, it's like, when you start looking at that, you can see elements of it. But I feel like there's definitely something built there for there to be more. Um, really, the, the ultimate test is going to be the 3D series, you know, because it's like we have the 2D series, but they've been five minutes short, so you can only do so much with a character's personality in five minutes. So, really, it's going to be interesting how it gets fleshed out here. Um, and they are using the same voice actors for the 2D as they are in the 3D, too, so I think that's going to create a nice consistency. So, we'll see. Um, I still, I, I'm sorry, guys, I still can't get over Hitch's chin in the 2D. <laughs> <laughs> like, that is one powerful chin. <laughs> so, your yeah. whole chin for a powerful horse. So, what I love is that we're doing this at a first year convention right now to talk about all of this because this is an example of continuing things on into the next generation here. You know, it's like, um, do we all miss BronyCon? Of course we do, right? It's like, no kidding. We all do miss it. But, you know, it's not here. You know, rest in peace. But that doesn't mean that we give up. That doesn't mean the community gives up. That doesn't mean the fandom gives up. That means we go, okay, what do we do? We use these new opportunities to build something new. Hence us all being right here in this room. This is one of our opportunities to say, okay, we want to keep this rolling. We want to see some growth. You know, we don't necessarily need to have 50 pony conventions as nice as it would be. Trust me, I cannot make it to all of them. Um, <laughs> also, like, if I may chime in, I, I miss, I miss Vernicon a lot. It was kind of like a second home, and I'm sure it's like that for a lot of us that went. Um, but I feel like it, like, not that I'm happy it's gone, but like, I feel like it almost ushers in, like, new talent. 
there's opportunity now. Yes, there's a lot more opportunity. And it, it actually reminds me of really early Pony fandom where like these brand new names started to, to come up, whereas like now they're like Pony staples. Um, and so it's I'm, I'm very curious now because I would not be a community guest at BronyCon. Like I, I don't have the quote unquote horse fame. Um, I, I'm just some. I was gonna make that a tall an episode, but I mean, if you want to get into. It. <laughs> but my my point being is, especially with these first year cons, it's like we're seeing a lot more fresh talent, and it doesn't. I guess it doesn't put down like what you know the other great stuff that early fandom people have done. But I'm I'm happy to see new faces. I will tell you. Um, one of the things that I have done uh, in my role with TrotCon is uh, got to uh, review some submissions for our um, community guest suggestion, um, which was which is quite the experience to go to look over them because as much as I, I and I've been in you know I started watching the show in 2013 so you can say I've been in the fandom for what like nine years something like that. I'm getting submissions that I'm reading for people I never heard of that when I look at them, I'm like, you have a following, you have something, and I've never heard of you, and I've been around. Um, God, that sounded weird coming out of my mouth. <laughs> but, but like, and it's not even talking myself up, but it's kind of like that, I think that's exciting as heck. Like, seeing new different faces come up, you know, like not every not every con's gonna have the same people, and I think that's great. Like I love to see different faces, different talent, and I love to see kind of like you know more of a new guard coming in, not replacing the old guard, but you know, uh, like you know, adding to us. You know. Now I can't speak for other people, but I know like I've been in this fandom for a very long time, and. I am, I'm a little, a little burnt out. Um, so like, I can't imagine some of these people that have been around for like, I'm curious if like their passion for, cause I know a couple of people, while they still go to the odd pony con every now and again, like you don't see them as much anymore. Um, cause they, they move on for pony. Um, and that's fine, so, might I add. Like, if if you have other desires and talent, like Pony, as much as we all love it, it's not the end all be all of the universe. Um, if anything, I've always felt like, with the values of the show and the community, what I've always felt like it can be. Like when I first started doing Keeping Friendship Magic, one of the things I thought was, how can we take what's happening in the Brony community and apply it outward? You know, apply it elsewhere. Like. Can I take what we're do, what I see here, what the possibility is here, and go to an anime convention with this? Can I go to uh, you know, just insert fandom here, furries, you know, whatever, you know? Can we take this philosophy and bring it on forward? So you know, there is that thing of even people who I feel like may have burn out on the show, like watch maybe like three or four seasons, and I went, ah, Twilight's Princess, now I don't want to watch it. Um, I've got my own opinion about that, but, <laughs> but are they taking the values? Are they taking the elements of harmony? Are they taking that uh, ideals of the community into what they're doing next? If so, like I've kind of always said that there's, there's bronies, but there's also this concept that I like to call bronyism. You know, this ideal, this belief in what makes this fandom tick, what brings us together. And a lot of it does boil down to the elements of harmony. Like, I've said to people time and time again, if you're ever questioning whether you're doing what you're doing is right, seriously, stop yourself for a minute and run through the elements of harmony in your head to see, can you check off each of the boxes? And if you can, you're good. If not, maybe rethink what you're doing. It's that simple sometimes. Um, so, people are going to get into different projects, people are going to move on, that doesn't mean that they are, like, the anime now, you know? Like, they are, they could still be espousing the values of the show. Like, we have met some amazing people through this fandom 
who, you know, haven't watched the show in years, don't necessarily consider themselves bronies anymore, but they're still amazing people that I am so happy to have in our lives. Oh, sorry, you look like you had something. No, no. Okay, okay, so keep talking. Um, well, do, that, do what you do. Okay, in that case, can I have you do me a favor? Can you go back to the room and get clarity? So the other thing about this is we, we were talking a lot about the past of the Keeping Friendship Magic Project. So, um, I've talked a little bit about this in panels past about how I started this and why. Um, my first pony convention was 2014, uh, BronyCon 2014. I didn't know a single other brony. I had watched the show, started getting into it, went, oh crap, I'm a brony, what do I do about this? There's probably no one else around me that is. And then I watched, um, you know what actually it was? I watched the, uh, the bronies documentary, the one with John Delancey. And that just introduced me to the reality that BronyCon existed. And I Googled BronyCon and saw Oh, it's in Baltimore, and I live in Pennsylvania. That's doable. <laughs> and um, so, and it was only like a month or two out. So I was like, I, I bought a badge. I got a hotel room outside of the city of Baltimore. Um, not the best move, but <laughs> um, although those hotels were expensive down there, um, and I just went by myself, knowing nobody, knowing. Like, you know, not, you know, just, just like, I hope this is good. I get there and I see their advertising doing the gopher thing, which if you're not familiar with what a gopher is, certain conventions offer the opportunity where you can do work as what they call a gopher. So it's basically doing kind of like little jobs to help out the con. And if you put in so many hours, they'll give you a benefit. Like most cons will comp your badge for the weekend. And uh, this boy was broke, so I just was like, you're gonna comp my badge? I'll help you. <laughs> so I walk into that room, to the little gopher hole, they called it, to where they waited to get jobs and stuff, and I was welcomed with open arms. Everybody was like, like, hey, how you doing? You wanna, you know, like, hey, we're gonna play a game while we wait to do stuff, you wanna play with us? And it's like, I found my people. <laughs> And it was like no other experience. I left, I left that convention on a great high. Um, now, the other things I got to do that weekend, um, I got to meet a couple of people. Some names um, you may or may not be familiar with. Um, if, any, if you guys know the name Michael Morones. Um, Michael Morones was a, um, a young man who, I believe it was at the age of 11, was uh, constantly bullied for his love of My Little Pony and unfortunately attempted to take his own life. And he, um, luckily they, um, you know, he was found where they were able to save him. Um, at the time, unfortunately, he did recently pass away just a few months ago. So. Um, rest in peace, Michael. We miss you. Um, God, I said I told myself I was gonna. I knew I was gonna cry in either this panel or tomorrow's panel. Set your set your watches, people. Put the over under on how much I will cry. So um, I got to meet him and his family. I also got to meet a, a little boy. I believe he was seven at the time, named Grayson who was bullied for bringing a Rainbow Dash backpack to school, and the school told him not to bring the backpack anymore because it was a distraction. Now, um, his mom, like, you know, there was a whole thing, it was on the news, his mom ended up working with the school to make a whole new anti-bullying program. I got to meet Grayson and his mother, and especially meeting Grayson's mother was powerful as hell. This woman just wanted to take care of her kid and give him the best life possible. And she was telling me, just because of the work she did, like the anti-bullying work she did, you know, and the things with that, she said that she was getting death threats. Oh. And like, this woman's like, powering through still like, I'm gonna stand up for my son, bringing him to, bringing him to the convention and everything. And you know, seeing that and the love for, for them, and seeing the love for Michael 
and his family and the support there as he was, you know, struggling to, you know, basically just survive at that point. Um, it struck a chord with me. And um, I came home from that event trying to figure out what can I do for the community? Because um, I'm like, this community is like awesome and amazing and I need to do something. Um, and I went through a couple of different permutations. Um, at one time it was going to be an LGBT focused thing, but then I realized like nobody here gives a crap. <laughs> so like, I mean that's the best way possible though. Like, like, like nobody here cares if you're gay, straight, pan, but like everyone accepts you in this community. So I'm like, I don't need to do it. The acceptance is already there. Um, and eventually I came up with this idea. I'm like, you know what? Um, for keeping friendship magic, partially because one of the things I did when I came home from that convention is um, I went online. I went on social media. And I realized we had a little bit of work to do. <laughs> so, um, and I realized a lot of the times, and this was at the same time I was in, I had started college and was studying sociology, that it's not that people, everyone's bad people. Like, a lot of times it's misunderstanding. And especially in this day and age with the internet, like, how your culture is in, here in Maryland, could be very different from how it was in Nebraska, or Idaho, or Japan, or Russia, or Thailand. Like, Brodies are everywhere, and we're all interacting and learning from one another, but we still have to deal with the fact that there is kind of this cultural differences and kind of overcoming them. And things that are okay to say in certain circles aren't in others. Um, I had somebody one time in a, in a my little pony group on Facebook or whatever went and made a comment, and he didn't mean anything by it. He really didn't. He was young didn't really know what he was saying, but in the in somewhere in the comment he used the words no homo. And um and it was like about to set off a firestorm in a chat, and I'm like, and I saw it and I was like, I can do one of two things here. I can freak out or I can approach. And that's what I did is I approached him and I said, you know, I don't think you meant to do this, you know, it's just a thought about like, you know. Here's, you know, this is how it could come off to some people. This may have been what you were trying to say. And the guy was like, thank you so much for understanding. I, I really did not mean anything. I'm going to take your advice to heart, you know, all this. And I was like, damn, if we could just, just get ourselves to this place where we can start understanding one another. Hey, Did we have a whole podcast episode about framing? Yeah, frame, the way you frame your message, it matters. Um, we did that at Harmony Con, actually. You can check out the episode on basically anywhere you find podcasts. Thank you for the plug. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I came up with this idea, and I called it Keeping Friendship Magic. Originally, it was just going to be a panel. And um, we, I had a friend who really believed in what we were doing and wanted to promote us and they had us on their podcast <laughs> and um, he was somebody who was suffering and was hurting and um, God I haven't talked about this in a while um, unexpectedly um, one night one day we learned he took his own life and um, it hurt a lot. Um, I think a lot of us did the blame ourselves things because it was like, you know, I had the, like, I could have messaged him to do something the night before, and I didn't, and you, you run yourself through all that. So um, this Rarity is actually a callback. Um, his favorite pony was Rarity, and shortly after that happened, um, Build-A-Bear came out with Rarity. So. Myself and Nova Rose and a bunch of us went and built rarities in his honor. And this rarity was at the very first Keeping Friendship Magic panel ever. And I wanted to bring it with me this weekend because we were talking about looking back. Because um, this is here for you, Danny, wherever you are watching, listening. <laughs> Forward. Press what? the button. Oh, which one? Oh, wait. 
Where is the... It moved up, I think, a little bit. say um, we're all going to go through struggles and it's interesting to look back at how things got to where they are now because I'm not going to lie, like I've not been in the greatest headspace lately. I've had a lot of personal challenges and I'm not going to lie, like I've seen a lot of things even in our community and our fandom lately that have been less than savory, I'm going to say. And um, But looking back at how the fandom got started, what we do, can show you why you do what you do, why there's a purpose, why we still keep going, why we want to bring on the next generation, why we want to make a difference. Because, damn it, ponies are awesome, this community is awesome, and we need to do everything we can to keep it going. I mean, that's, that's just my thought, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> Anything you want to add to that, Rose? <laughs> shoehorn a little bit into this into this episode is we talked about maybe doing one on the concept of arguing and arguments. Uh, like I said, I see a lot of it on social media especially. I mean, hello Twitter. Um. <laughs> this, this I think kind of goes into stuff that I was talking about um, in the hotel room is it makes me it makes me sad that this is happening, but it seems like a lot of people these days are very angry and scared. And mm -hmm. granted, we uh, we came out of a, a not so great four years, which I won't get into. Plus COVID, that didn't help. Uh, and I feel like a lot of people are acting with emotion really fast. And. Uh, it's, Twitter's rough right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, Social media in general is rough right now because it's everything's so polarized. So, I'll try to talk about a couple of things really quickly here within that. Because um, I have, if you want to hear a lot of a deeper tale, you can listen to the podcast episode we did at Harmony Con where we went to this in much more detail. How we react to things. How our brain reacts. So, here's a fun fact about your brain. Um, your brain is amazing. It is this great, powerful supercomputer that can do so much and regulates all your body functions. It's also lazy as hell. Your brain is programmed primarily for one function. Survival. There's a lot of things that, because it's programmed for survival, don't really work in a social setting. And let's face it, you go back and you think about like a thousand years ago, right? Like, you know, thousands of years ago when we're just living off the land and we're hunter-gatherers and we haven't built societies yet. And like, you need your primary, primary function to be stay alive before the panther eats me, right? <laughs> or the lion or wherever you are in the world. Insert large animal that is going to prey on you here. So if you see a panther, you need to immediately react and be like, run, right? Your brain is programmed for that. Now, we've paved the world. <laughs> we've built society. If I read a comment on, if I read something on Twitter, if I don't react right away, am I going to die? I sure hope not. <laughs> I don't know what Elon Musk has planned for it, though, so don't quote me on this later. Yeah, we 
Yeah, forgive us, Daddy Musk. Um, <laughs> Daddy. Forgive us, Daddy Musk, we have, have sinned. sinned. <laughs> the reason I bring this up is the centers of your brain that control um, emotion are what responds and activates first when you, when you have information come at you. Your centers of your brain that control logic activate after that which means that when you see something, your, your gut is going to, your brain is going to make you first react with emotion and then later with logic. So if you go in and you, you see something like that, your first response is gonna be like, that mother effer, like how dare he say that? And then it might be like, Oh, he might have been meaning about this other thing, and I, I may not have understood. But notice the time, you know, between, and the order in which we do that. Because when you need, to, like, what we do all too often is we see it, we, we react emotionally, we respond, and then we walk away without even letting logic even kick in, right? Or we stick in emotion. Like if you're having an argument, like if Rose and I wanted to have an argument right now, which I'm sure we could, but we're not going to. Oh, are we arguing? <laughs> but after just give a flutter shy is baha. <laughs> but if there's one thing that makes you want to stay in that angry space, it's the other person being angry. You kind of want to match. Your your tendency is to match where they're at, their level. So, it's tough to do. What I always recommend to people, it's a lot easier to do online, because online, you have your, you're your best friend in the world, the enter key. You don't have to push it. I say to people all the time, like, maybe even pull up like a, a word pad or a word document, or even just, just type it out, and then go back, wait a second, go back, look at it, try to think it through through logic, and I even said, run it through the elements of harmony. Does it jive with that? Was that something you want somebody to send to you? That way you can kind of gauge a little bit. I always think there's nothing wrong with debate and disagreement. I think we need more debates and less arguments. So there's little things you can do. Um, here's, one, here's one tip I will give you. If you're having a discussion with somebody, Try to avoid using the word but. Meaning, let's say, uh, give me a bad opinion. Uh, uh, Oreos are horrible. I happen to enjoy Oreos myself. I think that there is a good balance in flavor between the cookie and the cream. Now, I know there can be differences between the different flavors, but I do happen to enjoy Oreos. I didn't say, but I think, but like at the beginning there, I didn't lead it off with, but. If one of these tendencies you, uh, your brain does, by the way, when you're having a discussion like that, is if she were to say to me, I think Oreos are crap, and I go, but Oreos are great. Your mind instantly goes, they don't care about what I said. They, they're just like, but, but me, 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 me. If you remove but from your statement at the beginning there, kind of goes a long way towards getting a little bit more into that space of uh, debate as opposed to argument, because then it's not so much. I've always felt like if you go into a discussion with somebody, or I guess you could say an argument here, and your only goal is to make them see things your way and prove your right, you've already lost. As a quick side note, I do actually like Oreos. <laughs> <laughs> I've lied to you all. <laughs> How dare you? Um, but yes. Um, because I think that there's a way here, like, 
it's really hard to change people's minds. Can I say that? To change people's minds, attitudes, behaviors, it's so hard. Trust me, I've studied it. It's so hard. See, I, <laughs> I think you shouldn't go into a um, into like any kind of debate with the want to change someone's mind. What I think what you should go into a debate is more of planting the seeds, like let them think about it. Because there's a lot of times I, I had arguments with my brother. Um, lots of arguments, and <laughs> yes. you know, like the argument ended, like where we both left in a huff. But then, like, I thought of it, I thought about it for a while, and then I'm like, yeah, he was right. <laughs> um, and I, I think it's it's definitely good to go plant seeds. But like, if you're having a shouting match as to whether Oreos are good or not, like that's not gonna get anywhere at all. There are times, and some people aren't going to like it, there are times where you might have to recognize it's, you have to step away from something. Um, some people don't want to do it. Um, I have had to learn it for self-care, you know, that there are times where I see something and I just want to, like, I just want to do something about it. And having to realize, like, I'm not in the right mindset to do this right now. And it's okay for me to step away for a little bit and come back to it. Sometimes people aren't going to like that response, you know. If you have to respond to them, look, I need to come back to this. Some people aren't going to like it. They're going to be like, I want to do it now. But, but you see, also can't sit on it. Then that's yeah. Take care of yourself. Make sure you're taking care of yourself through everything. Hi. I'm, I wanted to bring up like, some of these like, emotional stuff and like, the way that we can support each other. So, um, that's a great question here. Um, in case the camera didn't pick it up, was kind of asking if any conventions have thought about bringing in um, psychologists or, or specialists here to talk about kind of these kinds of topics here. And um, I definitely can say it's something that I um, am very much in favor of, of doing. Um, I could say definitely, like, my specialty is sociology, but I would love to get somebody whose specialty is in psychology to do a little bit more of that, or even some sociology definitely works with it, but I will freely say while I have my degree, I'm also not the expert on everything. Do we have so, the brony psychologist? Uh, there were the brony psychologist, yes. Um, and there was, a, there was actually a sociologist, and I cannot remember her name, who did a presentation with Kathy Westlock actually at a couple of conventions um, back in the day. But I would be all kinds of um, game to do more of that. Um, that's definitely something to look into. Because um, I can say, I could definitely recommend that for any convention that I'm on staff for. Um, I'd love to see more of that. I think that's a great idea. Now, doesn't uh, Kathy Westlock, doesn't she have a degree in sociology? Minor in sociology, that's why I love her. Spike no sociology, y'all! Um, did I see another hand? Because we're, we're pretty much getting low on time, so if there's anybody who has questions, I will, I will have to wait. Okay, that's fine. If you think about it. We've got... Yeah. Yeah, sometimes you have to. Like, just to take care of yourself. Um, I know for me, that's been a big thing, is because... After this convention, I kind of am going to take a little bit of a break. Um, not too long, I don't think, because I freaking love you guys, and I don't want to be away for that long. But, um, you know, you reach a point, like I know me, you know, I've been doing this pretty much, like this project I've been working nonstop, going to cons, doing the presentation since like 2015. So after a while, you kind of get to a point where it's like a, Okay, you need rest. You need to focus on you. <laughs> I, I think I have a good, a good example of this with um, Bill the Bear, of all places. <laughs> um, I, I work for our local Bill the Bear, and we recently had uh, a couple of people leave, including our assistant manager, and one of the main reasons why she left 
was because like they they've been there for like four or five years, so they've been there for a while, and uh, you see things and you hear things, and it's a lot. And because one thing that I didn't realize that people did at Build a Bear is you can record your own messages, and we've had so many people come in and be like, they wanted to go get like a, a voicemail of a dead relative or they'll have like a dying relative to go do a bunch of voices for bears, which is heartbreaking every single time I see that. And over five years, it just graded her down so much that she just had to step away. Okay, because didn't you say one of them, like it was like, um, it was for the grandfather passed away or something and it was for the grandchild so they would still have, like the bear would have their their deceased grandparents' voice, and it's like, oh, I want to oh, that. <laughs> yeah. I had that three times in one day, um, and I I think that the same kind of goes with the brownie community, where this community is amazing, and I love it, but there are some things that do happen um, with with con drama, um, a Twilight Princess being one of them, and Derpy Gate, and. So many crazy things happen. What does the Zelda game have to do with it? I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. <laughs> but my point being is, uh, yeah, I, I, I understand stepping away because it uh, it grates on you after a while, and you just you just kind of need to relax for a bit. <laughs> yes. So arguably, part of the reason to step away is also to help prevent codependence from you or from people in the fandom who want to depend on. You. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Codependence is, gosh, we do not have time to dig into it fully, but <laughs> I, that's a total thing. Um, and it's honestly, I'm not going to lie, it's kind of been one of my fears. I actually literally had this conversation with her earlier about myself, and um, we're just, we might talk about this tomorrow when we do the feelings forum. Uh, we're doing that tomorrow afternoon. I can't remember the time, but... Um, Two thirty tomorrow, um, and I think we're going even past the time it says on there. Um, we already talked to Kachinka about that, but um, that's fine. That's fine. Anybody who still wants to talk about their feelings, we can. But I, I've been working with my therapist a little bit about some things about self identity, and I kind of had this real realization for myself where I realized like. Holy crap, so much of my, ident my identity is tied up in everyone other than me. <laughs> and that's kind of a thing for myself of like, before I let myself be completely codependent on, say, the community, the project, etc. I love it. I love my life. But I need, to, I need to look out for me, too, and be like, take some time for me and make sure that I can focus on myself so it's not like my identity is not entirely tied into just this and nothing else. So, yes. So to alter the expression, the artist is both creator and the marvel for what he works on, but in your case, you have just become more the marvel. Yes. The artist. Exactly, yes. I, I, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I can't even, I can't even go better than that. So, it is about time. So, I want to thank each and every one of you for coming out. I love doing this podcast. I love you guys. Uh, it's always a delight here. Um, Rose, do you want to talk a little bit about how people can uh, check you out and what you're doing this weekend? Um, yes. Um, gosh, I don't know the times for anything. I know I'm doing um, the, the NSFW panel with, uh, with Cherry Days. And I don't know who else on that panel. Not true. Um, other guests as well. Um, see, I'm on that. I'm on the. Um, I'm also on the feelings forum tomorrow. Um, Ten o'clock. Sweet. Um, I think we. I think that's all the panels yeah. I'm on now. Yeah. Um, if you do like what we do. Uh, we do have a Patreon. We do have Kofi. Um, I don't have a slide for it, but. Uh, I think it's patreon.com slash kfm. Um, you can find us both on Twitter. 
Um, the podcast is available just about anywhere you listen to podcasts. So um, if you like, just uh, put it on to listen to it. I think we've got about 30 episodes out now. So feel free, uh, check us out on there. Plus we are on YouTube as well, youtube.com slash C slash Keeping French and Magic. Otherwise though, um, thank you all for attending and remember to keep French and Magic out there. Thank you so much. Hey guys, Core Express you here. I am back in day two of Sequestria Fest. It is now over. I get to be lazy to go to bed and do some other stuff in my room. Actually, my friend's room, actually, because he's the one that owns the, the room, the hotel room, that is. But um, hopefully, you guys enjoy the day's worth of video. Uh, tomorrow will be a new story and a new video, hopefully, soon. Uh, because tomorrow is the last day, day number three of Sequestra Fest, and I can't wait to record something for you guys. And the closing ceremony, because the clo closing ceremony is the number one key to close the con out with a special bang. So hopefully you guys will see that. But anyway, I'm about to uh, do some stuff in the room, uh, relax, and then enjoy my rest of my night. Until then, Core Express 2, make sure to hit that sub button, turn on the notification bell to all, follow everything in the description down below, and comment too as well. Until then, I will see you guys later for day number three of Sequestria Fest. Core Express 2, signing out.